Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. Welcome to Hot and Cold. This week, we have maybe two weeks, but certainly we're going to start this week making a solar collector. And uh, a, a solar collector, one would consider a professional solar collector. So you could impress your friends with the fact that this is not just a do-it-yourself project, although it really is. Stay with us. So, you know, a lot of people, uh, there's workshops and, and people showing you how to make do-it-yourself solar collectors. You make, they make wooden cases and they do things that are kind of marginal in the overall scheme of things if one wants to have a, a real official solar collector. So I'm going to show you, we're make, we have to be making some solar collectors, we're rebuilding some collectors, and we're making new cases. So we're going to show you how a solar collector case goes together. But we'll start out, <clears throat> we're actually, this is, um, we're using sheet metal. This is a relatively thin gauge, I think it's 20 gauge aluminum. You can see, it's kind of twisty. Um, but it's very lightweight, and this would be the frame for the collector. And uh, we don't do anything real fancy. We're going to just overlap the joints because the metal is thin enough to make corners and stuff like that. You'll see that in a minute. To uh, hold the glazing on top, we have what we call a glazing cap. So we have the bottom of the, uh, the collector. And this will be the top. And we have a, a piece of angle that goes over that holds the glazing in place. And you're going to see all this in great glorious detail. But the first thing we start with, we, we, this, is a this is a three foot by eight foot solar collector. So this is the three foot part. Here's the eight foot part here. And <clears throat> I just want to show you if I reach around and grab, here's a frame that I put together. This is not the way they go together. But you can see this is pretty <laughs> floppy uh, because it's light gauge aluminum. It's only got uh, one screw in each corner, and it's going to fall and hit me in the head. But through the magic of compositing, we're going to make that into a very rugged solar collector. So the first thing we start with is a piece of insulation. The back of the collector is insulated. This is the 4 by 8 piece of Tough R. It's a trade name. It's made by Dow. It has two faces. It has one face here. Um, that is, I only have the full sheet to show you, one face which is aluminum foil. Straight aluminum foil like you get at the supermarket. The other face is shiny. That is a foil paper laminate. It's got the print on it. We want the aluminum foil, the pure metal, on the inside of the collector because it gets really hot in the collector. And we want to make sure that um, the, it, it, whatever is inside the collector can tolerate the temperature. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to cut the uh, foam down. Now the collector is 36 inches wide and we're going to um, cut the um, insulation to 35.5 inches because we um, have to leave a little bit of a little bit of room for me messing up. I use the piece of framing as a straight edge and if I could find my marks again, there's a little bit, I'm, I'm amazed um, from my life of selling foam insulation for years, uh, how many people ask, how do you cut foam insulation? And we'll show you. First, 
The beauty of this foil is that it's real easy to mark it. If I don't move my straight edge too much, we're okay. Um, <laughs> and if you stay against the straight edge when you make the mark, the, the chances of making a straight line are extremely, are greatly enhanced. Um, where's my big knife? I moved it over there. Let me get the big knife. We can cut foam with a saw like this. We use this all the time. Problem when you cut saw, foam with a saw, or you cut saw with a foam, is you make a lot of foam dust, which is plastic, sticks to everything. A far more appropriate technology is the knife. Now what you need to do is go to the kitchen and when your wife or husband is not looking, steal a knife. A serrated knife makes sense. We buy these, um, we buy them at Martin's, we buy them at the supermarket whenever there's a sale. You know, they sell the knife sets. Well, when the sale is, when the, they're done selling, they blow out them for 99 cents. We're always buying these knives. It looks like we have a steakhouse. We have so many of these knives. But what's beautiful about it is, We cut and we have absolutely no dust. And the dust is critical. I'm stuck here. Um, in terms of keeping the operation clean, we do not want to have foam dust around us. And the real reason for that is the fact that we're going to be working with a lot of plastic and a lot of um, tapes and adhesives and stuff. And we do not want to um, get dust all over everything and make a mess when it comes time to uh, stick stuff together. We want it to be clean. So we start out with, without the dust, without cut, making dust. We're in good shape. Okay, so next step. Um, so we've got one inch, one inch foam here, right? We've got a two inch channel. This is one inch by two inch by two inch. I had these folded up special for our project. If we fit this in, it's going to sit like that. We've got this gap here where there is nothing. We have to cut some one inch foam. So now, when you take a straight edge and you try to mark one inch foam and then run the knife or whatever, you get into mischief. Serendipitous, serendipitously, <laughs> we have one inch angle. We take the one inch angle that we've had made up. We fit it over the straight edge of the foam, the edge I have not cut. And I'm going to use the knife. I have different knives here. <laughs> I'm just a creature of habit. And we just set the angle right on the edge of the foam. And we just go and push the angle into the edge. And I should issue a, a major warning here. The foil face, that foil is like a knife. If you run your finger along the edge of the foil, you will cut your finger. Now I always measure my progress in any project and how much blood I've actually shed. But there's no reason you have to be as stupid as I am. So just be real careful. It would be good to wear gloves doing this. Um, you know, mechanics gloves or something. So now I've cut through this with this knife and that gets almost all the way through. But now I've got a nice slot there to run my knife through. And I don't have to worry about staying straight. It almost does, the, um, does everything automatically. I just kind of keep an eye on things. And we need three pieces like this. We need one for each side and one for the ends. I've already got some of those cut, so we'll throw this over here. Throw it over there. <laughs> and we're in good shape. Okay. So now we almost have a, um, an assemblage of stuff for doing the solar collector. Next step, we have, um, we have this box we're going to create, but we have a solar absorber. And let's get the absorber down because we haven't really ever looked at an absorber on this TV show. I think it's time. You're, you're, you, we've been around long enough. Let's look at an absorber. Okay, so this is a solar absorber. You've seen the fins on the show, but you haven't seen the whole color absorber. Black on the sun side, but let's turn it around because the back side really tells us more of the story. In this case, six inch wide fins, I believe, with a 3 8 tube connected to a manifold in the top and the bottom. It's a one inch pipe. 
And these were collectors that had been in for about 25 years. Uh, the cases were all plastic. They were getting a little, actually the cases were still in fairly good shape, but we had birds living in them. <laughs> so it was time to rebuild the cases. Um, this is what's gonna go inside our box. But we'll set this off to the side for a moment and um, we'll show you what we have to do next. So we've got the box that the absorber is going into for the house that Jack built, but we have to have an opening where the manifold comes out so we can collect, connect the collectors together. So we have to drill some holes in the case. And through major research effort on my part, um, I come in one inch on either end. I have an inch and an eighth hole saw here and a piece of wood that goes underneath and I'm marking the outer edge of the hole. Now one edge is up against the top of the case and the other is to the outer edge of my mark. If you want to come in and take a look at that from the top. Can you see that? Okay. And all we're going to do is drill a hole. Wow. How cool is that? So we do this on both ends. The beauty of aluminum case, all solar collectors have aluminum cases, is um, they're easy to drill through. Okay. And I always pop those little discs of aluminum out because they do pile up inside the hole saw after a while. Um, but we'll do that later. Okay, so now we have the holes on one piece drilled and we can clean that up, but let's, uh, let's swing this around over the camera person's head. And we need to, now we could make a collector where we just pass the pipes through, but those, mani uh, those manifolds have unions on the end which are bigger than the holes. So what we're going to do to make this all work is just cut a slot down to the hole. So I've got a left hand cutter and a right hand cutter and we're going to just cut, you can see how light gauge this metal is and we just bend that back and now we can just lay that absorber right in when the time comes. We do the same thing on this end. I measure my progress, as I say, with bloodshed, and I've done several of these so far, and there's no blood. I'm not sure I'm doing the job right. Do that, or maybe I'm just getting really good at this. I'm not sure that's the case, but okay. So there we have it. Um, got a little bit of a burr on the edge there. We can file that down, um, and that's one. We're gonna do two of these, so we'll do the other one. And then we're almost ready to start assembling the case. All right, so let's start assembling the case. So the, the major, major component here is actually the insulation. And what we're really building here is a mini house. We're building a, uh, the analog of a house where we're basically got a big window. We need insulation to hold the heat. We need something to get the heat out, which is the absorber. So the back side of the collector, for many years I actually put the foil to the outside and let that be the weathering surface. Um, it would see, usually it was down against the roof so it was never an issue. This particular array, it is going to be exposed, the collectors will be vertical. So we need to cover it and we have some two inch, uh, excuse me, two foot wide um, trim for uh, aluminum trim that siding guys use. And uh, I got that at the local lumber yard. And we're going to stick that to the back. Now, there's a lot of different ways to stick it to the back. I happen to have some um, double-sided tape that I'm using. It's made by 3M. And wasn't terribly expensive. Matter of fact, I think this was a sam free sample. Um, you could use construction adhesive. You could use silicone caulk. The beauty of this tape is it grabs immediately. We, um, we roll it out, then we take off the release paper, or we try to, there we go. And we have this thin 
layer, like a couple mils thick, of adhesive. And it's sticky and it's wonderful. We don't have to wait for it to cure. And, uh, and in the overall scheme of things, it smells pretty good too. <laughs> I love to smell stuff. Um, doesn't smell like good cooking, but okay. So that's that. Now, three foot wide piece of stuff. It'd be nice if we had a three foot wide piece of metal to cover it. That tends to be difficult to find and can be pricey. So we're going to use two foot wide material and we're going to apply it in such a fashion that it will be like a shingling effect. Now, these are, this is eight feet, this is two feet. We have to overlap it a little bit, so we have to make up for the overlap somewhere. The back piece here is two inches wide, so we have four inches to play with. So, we uh, will come up and start one inch from the end here. This is hard to do by yourself, but so far I've pulled it off. This is not going to stick perfectly, but it'll stick good enough to hold it flat. Now, um, the, um, the secret weapon, silicone caulk. We're using neutral cure silicone caulk, which they call adhesive sealant. It isn't just for uh, sealing cracks in your house. It is used a lot in many industries for sealing all kinds of things. In our case, we're using it to seal the back of the solar collector. Now we're going to shingle. We're going to get a shingle effect here in that we're going to overlap and one piece will go over the next by about three-eighths of an inch and we'll, that'll be, then be the top of the uh, collector and by shingling this um, we will get away with the fact that it will shed water if it is exposed to rain and stuff. This really is a two-person operation. Uh, in my shop, everybody else is busy, so I've been doing this by myself. Now, we're going to screw those together in a minute, but for now, we just line it up by eye and put another bead here. So we're going to have three beads of caulk because the top and bottom don't get caulked just yet. We've got a little bit of an edge here where there is no paint and the other edge is good. So we'll use the good edge for the exposed part. And we have to be a little careful with the tape because once the tape, once this is down on the tape, it is stuck. And there ain't no going back. You, you, there is, you have to re, reapply the, uh, the tape. But that's what's nice about using an adhesive that doesn't cure right away is you can slide stuff around. Now, you know, I, I said earlier, a lot of people make these boxes out of wood. You can certainly do that. But uh, and most folks use pressure treated lumber. And unfortunately, there's an issue, I think, with pressure treated lumber. I love using pressure treated lumber for many projects. And I just slid that all over the place talking. This is the problem. You do a TV show while you're trying to assemble solar collectors and you make, make a little bit of a mess. That's OK. It's silicone. It wipes up. OK. Um, if you're making a wooden box, you've got to protect. The, the pressure treated lumber has a lot of uh, uh, copper in it. Copper in contact with something that isn't copper, like this backing, is going to make the aluminum corrode because copper is a more noble metal than aluminum, the aluminum will corrode. So we have to be extremely careful about what's in contact with what. Additionally, a wooden box will tend to dry out in a solar collector environment, so we really want to segregate it with a layer of foam on the inside. The box starts to get bigger, it gets heavier. This is not terribly expensive to have made up. So I like to use this just because um, it's a little bit more money to have a sheet metal shop fold it for you. But it isn't that expensive. I've actually used um, flashing this thickness with a, uh, uh, a siding break and made up a case and laminated foam to the, um, to the metal. Now, again, this is pretty twisty stuff. I mean, we've got not a lot of structural rigidity here yet. Oh, but the magic is about to occur. Okay, so this is the back. So we want to 
we want to have um, a bead of caulk right at the edge and another bead a little bit further back. And take note that a lot of times this aluminum has oil on it. We want to make sure that it is free of oil before we apply an adhesive because it might not bond well. And we want to have a continuous bead up against that outer edge. Okay, so now I'm going to set this off to the side for a minute. We're going to flip this over. We do have enough structural integrity with the tape that we can lay this over. Okay, it's laying flat now. I'm going to grab the foam, the one inch foam I cut earlier, and we're going to pick this up and we're going to sneak this frame underneath the edge. And we're going to push it in, smush it into the caulk. We're going to make that set right in as far as it'll go. And then we take our one inch foam and look at this. Because we have measured it accurately, it goes in like butter. Is this nice? This is so nice, isn't it? Look at that. Now, we've done a couple things. We've pushed that metal on the back up against the frame. All that silicone is going to bond. We're going to do the other side, and then we'll, uh, we'll do the ends. And then we'll almost be done. But I think we're going to be two weeks doing this because there's still a little bit more to do. It's an easy project, but it's two TV shows. Okay, so I've got the two sides in now with the one inch foam. And let's flip this back over again. And look how nice the back looks. Doesn't the back look nice to you? Looks nice to me. I'm easy to please. Now, uh, where we have this overlap, look over here. The silicone has sprung up a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill this. We're going to do four sort of equally equidistant spots, just eyeballing it. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just happen to have a little bin full of stainless steel fasteners. Everything on a collector should be stainless steel. Okay, not galvanized because it's going to corrode. So these got pan head screws. We're only screwing through two pieces of aluminum. So, and, and the only reason we're doing this is just to pull those two together. And I want to use these screws up because I've had them for about 25 years. Um, they actually were used for putting solar collectors years, together years ago. And uh, we could do this with aluminum pop rivets if you had them and you wanted to do that. I'm not a big fan of pop rivets for some reason and I've got the screws. So we're going to do these three strips. We're going to overlap that. Then we're going to take a... Um, I, I also picked up some self-drilling stainless steel screws, which you were using to hold, join the whole collector together. And we're going to screw the case to the back. And we want to be... And, and that just helps to make that, mechan that, that joint mechanically tight. And we'll go down either side, two on each piece of this and then we'll put the ends on and we'll have an insulated box. So next week we make the magic of the insulated box into an insulated solar collector ready to go on the roof to make hot water. But we're out of time. They're giving me the high sign. We got to go. But I've got this this far in this short period of time. And we're not talking about an incredible investment in money. Uh, we're not using a lot of materials. And in this case we're recycling. But we'll go. We got more to talk about next week. We'll see you then. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.